right. Is this too close? My shirt's faded. Oh, I might just might have thrown this away. Okay. This upload is going to be me reviewing um, Futurama Season 4, Episode 5 and 6. Episode 4 is titled... Uh, take this out. Titled Leela's uh, Homeworld. And... Episode six is titled "Where the Buggalo is From." Really like where the Buggalo is from, but I was. Let's just get into number number five first. It's not a bad episode. It's um, I've been waiting for this episode to. Well, I've been waiting to, to hit this episode because I've been watching the show in chronological order. I haven't been really jumping around. But, oh, I like this episode. I like this episode. Let me watch this. Let me. Episode one. Episode one. Season one is where I started. Episode. Two season one, just like that, all the way up to now. Episode four, season was it episode four? It's episode five, season four. I'm here. I didn't know what. Of course, I didn't know what episode, what season was in. I just remembered the episode. This is. Um, I think I've said this before in this series. This series has episodes that are funny, episodes that are funny, and also spark that intelligent side of an individual and then they have episodes like this that are more tender or just uh for me this episode for me this episode uh uh gives me a sense of fulfillment why do i say that because i've been waiting to hear the backstory of Leela for so long and of course like I said I've watched this series several times so I knew she was an alien I knew she was a mutant but I still wanted to get the payoff of watching the episode and uh, being exposed to every little detail because you know it's like a foggy memory really when you oh five five six it's like a, a foggy memory when you, uh, it's like it was foggy in my memory when I when I can uh, recall the episode, but now watching it again, I was like, perfectly done, it explains a lot, it's really, it opens you up to a whole other uh, world, or a whole other look at Leela, um, because overall, Leela's a pretty simple, a simplistic character, and, um, this one adds another layer, a layer of death, or, I can't say the word, adds another layer to her, makes her more, uh, Makes her more uh, uh, layered. Well, yeah, I, I have no vocabulary right now today. I can't been in the sun too much, <laughs> but it makes her it makes her more well round, well rounded character. Um, as far as other characters that uh, show up in this episode, of course, Fry is in it. Fry, Fry is always going to be there because he has this uh, this infatuation with Leela. Not even a crush. It's way more than that. Um, he saves the day. He say he stops her from actually harming her parents because her parents are fearful that if she was to find out that she's really a mutant, something silly like she was already finding out she would hate herself or she would hate them. Like, no, I think it's actually I think this is actually one of the episodes that gets you thinking now. Now, now that I really sit here and ponder on it, like it's no matter. Who you come from, there's a certain type. They call it unconditional. They get, they've given it a name, but I feel like it's it, it deserves more than that. There's a certain type of love that comes from a parent towards a towards a kid. Um, although, uh, of course, there's instances where, of course, there's instances where, um, of course, there's instances where it can go left, but for the most part you know there's just unflinching like fully submersive type of care and affection that comes from a parent and that's uh, um, that's just thrown or, or and tries to encapsulate their children um, which I think is portrayed perfectly in this episode they would do anything to give her a better life and I feel like they did they had to give her up and 
it's 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 the episode is it's not too many jokes in this one actually, but it's it's full of. Like it just took me to a place. That, that's all I can say about it. It just took me to a place, and I I, I enjoyed rewatching it or stepping back into it and um, seeing how they get to create this character's arc. I really enjoyed that. Now, let's get to where the bugalo is wrong. Uh, before I almost forgot it. Before I forget the joke, so they get to go to Amy, the characters. Amy's uh, her parent. Some joke. She's she comes from money. And it's it's actually who it's actually a bit of uh, it's actually telling the future kind of because her she's of Asian descent um, and her parents own a really big cattle ranch and if you do your homework well not not do your homework but if you look around and you see uh, what nationality owns a lot of property or is buying up a lot of property in cash not with not with loans and cash. They're Asians. They're mostly Chinese. Now, um, that's that's who purchased my mother's uh, property. Uh, she was a nice lady, though. I met her. I got a chance to meet her. She said, hey. I said, hey. We talked for a little bit. Her and her, um, I guess her handler, I guess, would be the right. But he he, uh, he facilitates everything. Like, you know, all the workers that, that um, fix up the property and just overall security. She she's the money. He's the he's the uh, not the brains, but the the work, the working, the, the muscle. Uh, I met both of them. They were pretty nice. But I'm just saying, it's like, cause for me trying to purchase my first home, um, I ran into that as well. Like you go in there and you try to get, um, you go in there and you try to uh, purchase this house, but you have to put in asking. I mean, you have to put in a bid, but you got somebody putting in all cash offer. Which one do you think you're gonna take? Are you gonna take all cash offer where you can get the majority of the money right away, or are you going to still not gonna paint that wall? <laughs> I'm just gonna move the camera. Still not gonna paint it. Oh, are you going to um, wait for uh, everything to clear as far as the loan goes? No, you're gonna take the cash. You're gonna take the cash offer. That's just a personal connection to the to that one little episode that I just thought of right now. But the episode is funny. I almost forgot I almost forgot the joke. Uh so Zoidberg comes to the house and you know they do the normal stuff. Hey, my house is your house. Make yourself comfortable. He's like, don't worry, I already did. He's took all the champagne and he's poured it into a bathtub and he's wearing a robe. It's he's actually pretty funny. But they they get to one part when they're having a barbecue and um of course, uh, Zoyberg is like a, he's basically like a crab person, if you will, uh, like a crustacean or something like that. So they're sitting there eating caviar, and he's like, oh yeah, uh, let's let you know I fertilize your caviar, because caviar is fish eggs, if anybody doesn't know what that is. So that made me laugh out loud. That was funny. And the fact that uh, 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 and Amy's father was eating it, so I had the fact that as Amy's father is eating, and he's telling him, "Yeah, I, I basically, you know, um, gave my portion, or uh, gave my half of the, uh, <laughs> gave my half of what's necessary on, on on your half." And he kept eating it. He stopped for a second, and then kept eating it. <laughs> Which I, you, you have to watch it because I can't see. I can't explain it. I'm, I'm, I might as well just be butchering. I can't explain the joke. It's too funny. But this in this episode, um, Amy is dating what is it, Kiff, the second in command to Zap Brannigan. Jesus, I know all these characters' names now for some reason. But anyway, um, this is his first introduction to her parents. Of course, they don't like them. They wind up. Oh yeah, this one actually this one actually skirts the line of being pretty heavy because they're dealing with um, they're dealing with the the plight of indigenous people. Which is like, ooh, yeah, that's bad. Don't want. You, I mean, you don't. Want, it's just, just, it's just a dark road that you don't want to walk down. But you shouldn't. What you shouldn't avoid it. You should walk down it, but don't try and don't try and dwell on it because it, it, it did happen so long ago. But it was pretty bad. I'm trying to make light of it. It was actually horrible. Same thing as slavery. It's, it's pretty horrible. But um, they bring it up in this episode. Um, 
along with a couple of zingers, like some really funny, some really funny jokes and observations come up in there. But they they, they made it a pretty decent outcome where um, they were like, yeah, Amy's ancestors uh, bought all of Mars. They're on Mars, matter of fact. This is set in the future. Amy's ancestors bought um, all of Mars for a bead. Guess what the bead turns out to be? They make they make they make reference to it through the whole episode. Oh, one bead, one bead, this, one bead, that. Guess what the bead is? It's literally the diamond the size of a refrigerator. Very valuable, right? <laughs> you know, Bender's the thief, so he takes out a looking glass to look at the the structure inside the the diamond itself. He starts he starts going oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he starts malfunctioning. He's like, oh, thank you, made it. He makes the and he makes the uh, classic joke. Uh, you made me the happiest girl in the world, and the dude just pushes him off. Uh, I think that's a pretty good ending to the episode, but I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, and um, I'm gonna have to do Breaking Bad either tomorrow. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do it tomorrow, Monday. I don't know. I should have a movie review for tomorrow too. But, well, who knows? 